You are now listening to FMB Radio. Radio. And welcome to FMB Radio. I'm going to start calling it FNT Radio, though, because all I do is care about tea now. Not even, like, from a knowledge standpoint. Um, Not like I know a lot about tea. I'm just saying that's all I talk about because that's all I do. Welcome to the show. It's not FNT Radio. That just doesn't roll off the tongue. So it's FNB Radio. It's a podcast that's loosely about food hosted by me, Lindsay Collins. Uh, that's an intro that I've never done before, and I'm I'm never going to do it again. It's... I'm trying something new. It's called podcasting when you'd rather not. <laughs> Normally I'd, I'm would i always like stoked to uh, get on the mic. But today's been an interesting day. And yeah, I've got my tea. I'm already in my sweatsuit that I bought with Afterpay. Sorry, Jeremy, if you're listening. I bought a sweatsuit with Afterpay. I don't know if you're familiar with Afterpay or if you are financially stable. But if you're not the latter, if you're more on the, I, I bought a sweatsuit with afterpay, then join me. And even if you're on the other, even if you're stable, whatever you can join too. Um, I, I don't want to blame this on my like astrological sign because a, I know some people are like, that's not even real. I'm not even saying you have to believe in astrology though. I, I do strongly. Uh, but my astrological sign is a Taurus and they're all about comfort and like just being cozy. So I'm not trying to like spin this, this thing that I did into, you know, something that I can't help, but I do love to be cozy. And in the last, I don't know, two years, I really realized that as much as I love to be cozy, I'm usually, I usually look homeless in my own home which is unfortunate because I paid a lot of money and I worked very hard uh, to have a home. And, you know, so if I'm going to do all that, I'd at least not like to look homeless. I don't even mind looking homeless, but it just seems odd to be in a home and to look as disheveled as I do. So I'm always trying to, like, level up my, you know, my loungewear. I don't mean, like, make it sexy. Quite the opposite. I'm talking about more fabric softer fabrics, matching fabrics all over my body because I used to, and I still do actually, um, you know, just wear a t-shirt and one of Jeremy's old t-shirts. It's like my favorite pajamas, but you know, I have little, little boys now, especially. So like my days of prancing around in my underwear, sort of, you know, they're on hold just for, (laughs) just for a while, just until, um, you know, all of my youth has faded, but I have gotten like into, into athleisure, like sets. And with that, the, the kind of, you know, other side of athleisure is sweatsuits, sweatsuits, things that are like matching sets, but that aren't like skin tight and made of, you know, stretchy fabric. They're like loose, plush, sporty, you know, cute, but anyway, God, this story's already gone on too long. But basically, I, I saw this sweatsuit, and it was on sale, but only the bottoms were. So I got the bottoms, but then later the top went on sale. And I, I'm embarrassed to say what it cost because I really can't afford it. But I that's why I put it on Afterpay. But I was like, I have to have the top to this sweatsuit. So I ordered the top on Afterpay. And, you know, it's paid off now. And... And so it's just a regular sweatsuit. I don't have to mention the part about afterpay. That's just something I threw in there for you guys. Um, But I'm wearing that. I'm drinking my tea. And I'm happy you're here. Thank you so much for coming back. I'm sorry I was off last week. It's one of those weeks where it just didn't happen. But that's always a downer for me because (laughs) the happiest I ever am is like right after I do the show. Not usually when it's out. Um, but right before anyone can listen to it, because it comes out at midnight on Thursdays, if all goes to plan. Um, so I'll do the show and then there's this kind of in between period before it gets released. Um, and that's usually when I feel the best about it. Cause I haven't, you know, it's not actually out there. There's <laughs> just, it's just, uh, fun vibes, but no, I'm, I missed you guys. I'm happy to be back. I am also happy to announce that yesterday I put it on Instagram, but, um, I'm going to be speaking I'm like, they asked me to speak at Creative Mornings Charleston. 
And it's a breakfast gathering. It's always a really cool bunch of people that come together and have kind of like a, they listen to a guest speaker. There's a Q and a, you eat delicious snacks, usually like something local, like Callie's hot little biscuit and drink amazing coffee and listen to a musician or some sort of artist perform. Um, it's dope. And they do them every single month. And there's always like the people that have already done these. I look at the rosters of the people who have been speakers there and I'm just like, someone must have canceled um, right at the end because I don't know how I ended up be being a speaker there, but it's going to be really fun. It's going to be like uh, a cool thing because actually I hope, and I hope it will be this case when I'm there, but I, I actually like to speak in front of people. I also enjoy speaking from the comfort of my own home in a closet, but I I can ma I can manage, you know, from waiting tables for so many years, like talking in front of strangers is actually some of the most happiest times of my life. <laughs> Not because like I love um serving other people, but even though I do I you know, to a certain extent that's true. But it's mostly that there's something so um I don't know, easy to talk to a crowd. It's like, it's very hard to talk to someone one-on-one, -on -one, but just a crowd, it's kind of like, I don't know. You don't, if you, if you don't have to imagine them knowing the depths of your soul, it's a lot easier to just get up there and talk. But I'm excited to talk about F&B Radio and kind of it, how it started and where it is now. And it's been going on a long time and it kind of launched an entire new career path for me. <laughs> um, so it's, yeah, I'm stoked to A, be asked to do anything like that because that feels very um, much like an honor. And B, I'm excited to see you guys in person. I think tickets will be available. You just have to claim them, but they go live um, 10 o'clock on September 25th. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to put it on Instagram. So if you follow me there, I'll also put a link to it here in the show notes if I can remember to do that. I'm really bad about that. I'm always, I realized I did that last week. I was like, I'm going to put all their names and in the their Instagrams in the show notes. And then I was like, what? I don't even know my own Instagram handle. How could I possibly put 12 of them in the body of a, I'm not doing that. But I, you know, it's my intention to do it. Cause I said I was going to do it. <laughs> I like to do what I say I'm going to do. Um, but I am going to be posting about it on Instagram. So if you really do want to come check it out, it's going to be really fun. Um, there will be a Q&A at the end. Not that you have burning questions, but if you do, you know, come hang out. And a huge thank you to Steph. My friend Steph Short, she's the best. You guys probably know her. If you live in Charleston, you probably know Steph. She's amazing. Um, she was the one that initially reached out, and she's been just a, a, a friend in the DMs. You know what I'm talking about <laughs> for a long time. And a friend in real life. I've um, gotten to hang out with her a lot more this year, post-COVID, or whatever you want to call it. I don't know. How do we talk about that now? I mean, I, it, everyone has to do that. They're like, you know, after COVID, I mean, I know it's not over. And then you have to say that because you want to make sure that people know that you're not like a... Anyway, it doesn't matter, but I'm just saying it's it's hard to describe the now. We need like a B, C, A, D situation so we can just all say like this this marks this time and we don't have to add any disclaimers because it's a lot of talking. Um, But yeah, thank you so much to Steph who luckily I've seen once already this year in real life and I hope to see at Creative Mornings and I hope to see you there. Um, What else? Oh my God, I've been having this absolute love affair it, it's it may be the most obsessed I've ever been with a single recipe so quick. Um, but I've been having a love affair with making granola. Now, before you just, before you crash your car into a ditch and then turn this podcast off or, you know, destroy whatever device you're listening to this on, I know how it sounds to say that it's granola that I'm obsessed with, but it it's not what it seems. <laughs> it's amazing. First of all, Shout out to Young Kombucha 420. Um, I've had her on the show. Her name, her real name is Amy France. She, I'm just, I absolutely love her. I think she's amazing. And I always see her making food. Um, and I'm like, is 
Is it though? Is it is it as good as it looks? Because it looks amazing. Is it as good as it? Could, does it possibly all work together, or is it just? Is it only for Instagram? Is it just beautiful to look at, but it's not actually fun to eat? So I've been wanting to make something that she makes, just for a point of reference, you know. And she's obviously the real fucking deal because I made this granola after a demo that I watched on her Instagram. It's just a highlight reel and it's on the highlights. It just shows the process of her making skillet granola. And I'm telling you, even if as I sit here and tell you all about it right now, it will seem boring, but I'm going to do it anyway because the method is so amazing and the result is so, it's just mind blowing how therapeutic it is. Or maybe it's, maybe I just have a disease, but I think it's the most therapeutic thing ever. So you take, a cast iron skillet and you set it over heat like medium low heat and then you toast nuts and this is part of why I think it's so good for me but I've been using these pecans that my parents got out of their yard and then we all kind of cracked them and shelled them and I have them in the freezer but they're like the best pecans in the whole world and we say whatever pecan pecan tree pecans I, I don't say pecan but regardless they're delicious and like super oily and plump and earthy and like sweet and when you toast them in the pan all of the pecan pecan whatever you want to say oil gets into the pan and it slowly kind of renders that out and crisps up the the nut whatever nut you're using even if it's not if it's a macadamia nut or cashew or anything almond anyway then she adds a handful of um raw rolled oats and then stir those constantly keep stirring it get everything all toasty until the whole kitchen smells like super toasty and fragrant and honestly that's like the best part just toasting pecans and oats in a cast iron pan slowly turning it it's the smell is insane it's so toasty like jeremy will just remark on how good it smells just to toast them Um, it's intoxicating. So you toast those and then once you toast them, then you can spice them any way you want. Cinnamon, cardamom, clove. I put a little bit of all that in and salt, lots of honey or as much as you want. It doesn't even have to be lots, but you know, I would say a tablespoon of honey. Is that a lot? And then you stir it around. I added some vanilla after I stirred it around for a bit. And then I sprinkled some chia seed on it just for like this weird extra crunch and so that you can have it in your teeth for the rest of your life. Um, but it's so shockingly good. Like you just spread it out while it's still warm, kind of thick on a plate and let it cool and sprinkle it with malt and salt as it's cooling and then break it up and eat it. And it's like, I challenge you if you're like listening to me being like, Whoa, okay. Granola girl. I feel you, but don't knock it until you try it because it really is one of the most satisfying and delicious things I've made in such a long time. And it just, I don't know, it feels like I'm, feels like I'm someone else when I make granola. And that's all I'm saying. Wouldn't you pay money for that just to feel like someone else? I I would. (laughs) I would. Um, Yeah, make the granola. Put whatever you want in it. You can use any nut, any type of grain, you know, puffed millet, crispy brown rice like you could I'm I'm gonna just not stop until I've tried every combination because it's so good I eat it in the morning and I eat it for a snack it's like almost savory you could even make it savory I've thought about throwing like fennel seed and other shit like that in there and just making it totally savory cracked black pepper rosemary and honey like doesn't that sound amazing telling you homemade granola who knew now I see the store-bought stuff and I'm just like, ugh, trash. Even though I, lo- I mean, I love store-bought granola. Like it's, I say store-bought as if there's any other kind. Like I've never eaten any other kind of granola except store-bought. That's why it's blowing my mind that I made it at home. But yeah, now I can't even, I can't even entertain the idea of store-bought granola when you can make your own in five minutes. Well, it's like ten, counting the cooling time and the stirring time. You have to toast the nuts really slow or they will get bitter. I, I rushed it one time because I was kind of like half watching the show. We're watching Better Call Saul. 
don't even get me started. I know you guys already know all about that show, but I'm late to the game. I'm always late to the game with stuff with uh, TV. But once I get there, I'm there. So we were watching that, and I was kind of like not paying attention that much. And I, I, I burned them a little. And I was like, they weren't burned, but they were deep, 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 dark brown too quick. You can get pretty deep if you go slowly. This is sounding worse than it is. But if you're just toasting oats, which is what we're doing, if you get the golden brown depth of color, but you get it slowly over time, your oats won't be bitter. But if you, you know, get there too quick, it's not good. It's not as good. It's just more of a bitter flavor. And that's not what we want. The granola is all about nuance and chew and subtle spices and depth of flavor. I, I'm telling you, I'm obsessed with this stuff and it only makes me more obsessed with Young Kombucha 420 because I'm like, I knew it. Everything that she makes is as good as it looks. I highly recommend it. Go, go to her page and she'll do the whole like demo. It's literally saved um, on her Instagram. You can watch her make it and try it for yourself. And let me know if you're as into it as I am or do I just have some like little house on the prairie fetish that I'm not addressing. There's probably a lot of truth to that somewhere. Um, what else, guys? I think that's it. I Honestly, it's been a crazy-ass week. I wanted to just kind of show my face and, and not let myself down and have my tea, but I'm wearing my sweatsuit and... I, I got to get to being cozy. I'm going to go out and see my parents over the weekend and chill. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Get a ticket to the Charleston Creative Mornings. Creative Mornings Charleston. Why can't I say that right? What's wrong with me? See, I'm already too cozy. I'm sleepy. Um, make some granola. And I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Chef,